Hello everyone, this is Rupal Gulaid and I once again welcome you to another practical session and the title of that practical, you can see it on the board and that is all about determination of standard EMF as well as standard free energy of the Daniel cell. So my dear friends, before we actually start with the experiment, one small comment I would like to give you in response to the comments which I have received for the previous videos and that is that when I am considering a practical session so I am trying to limit myself only to the practicality of that particular experiment alright every practical has a theory okay and an extended theory because chemistry is vast okay it cannot be simplified into a few minutes alright here I am explaining the theory but only a basic theory which is related to the experiment so you know how to actually perform it. Okay, I am not explaining you the entire theory behind that. Okay, then it will become too much beyond the capacity of the video of this part. Okay, so it's like I am discussing only the practical aspects and only the basic information which you require so that you understand the practical very well. Okay, it's like the as when during a practical session before you actually start with the experiment and few minutes instructions which are being given by your uh, instructor the same thing which I'm doing it over here as well all right so please keep a note of this uh, in my previous video about potential meter I had given you about uh, titration of Fe2 plus against um, K2C auto 7 and then I explained you the sigmoid curve and all now why exactly that shape is okay that is all being dealt in detail in the theory part of your syllabus okay there are two syllabus I hope you know this practical as well as theory so the details of which the entire graph what are the various ways in which the graph can be plotted okay everything is given in the theoretical syllabus all right so I just try to touch the practical aspects and the same thing is going to be done over here as well this, that's why I in the beginning only say that this is a practical session this is not a theoretical session I hope the concept is clear to you all all right so you start with as you can see, the aim of our experiment is to find out the standard EMF as well as the standard free energy change with respect to Daniel cell. Now, what is a Daniel cell? Is okay. Now, see to be in very short, as I said already, I'm going to just explain you in short. When you talk about a cell, okay, a cell is being set up of two parts. Okay, we also call it as a half cells. Okay, half plus half gives you one. All right. So we have one half cell, we have another half cell. In one of the half cell, there is going to be oxidation. In the other half cell, there is going to be reduction. Okay, so that's why we also call these as redox reactions. Okay, so there are going to be two electrodes. One is cathode, the another is going to be anode. So here when you talk about a Daniel cell, okay, it is going to be made up of two half cells, one half cell comprising of zinc and the other half cell comprising of copper. Okay, and I am going to give you a net cell reaction. I hope you understand the word net cell reaction. Half plus half. That means the reaction taking place at cathode plus the reaction taking place at anode. You add both of these and you get a reaction. Okay, that is called as a net cell reaction or what we call it as NCR. So the net cell reaction for the Daniel cell is represented as Zn plus Cu2 plus gives you Zn2 plus and plus Cu. Okay? We are talking about a forward reaction. The reaction is reversible as well. Please keep this in mind. But right now we are considering only the forward reaction. Now, whenever I show over here zinc, it's in an isolated state. Now, my dear friends, any element in the isolated state always have a charge zero. Any element I'm talking about, it can be a metal, it can be a non-metal, any element in the isolated state, its charge is always zero. So I write down here zero. I write down here, it is going to be what? Zero. All right. Now, coming back is the charges are already mentioned over here. Okay. So as we go from, okay, now see, check it out. From Zn0, we are going to Zn2 plus, and from Cu2 plus, we are going to what? Cu. Alright? So, try to understand this where ex exactly oxidation and where exactly reduction is taking place. So, 0 to 2 plus, increase in charge, and therefore, yes, it's oxidation. 
it is oxidation. Cu2 plus to Cu0, reduction in charge and therefore it is reduction. That way you need to remember, okay, because chemistry is all about remembering in this shortcut ways. So many times, you know, you don't remember, okay, what is oxidation and reduction in terms of charges. So simple is, reduction in charge is reduction. So it's obvious, you now use a principle of connectivity. So therefore, what we say is that increase in charge is going to be oxidation. So this is a Daniel cell, net cell reaction. Okay, next thing is, you already know, these are the basics which you have learned from your theory syllabus, and that is, at anode, there will be oxidation. And at cathode, there will be reduction. Okay, it's as simple as that. Okay, at anode, it's oxidation. Remember, OA, OA means oxidation anode. So it's very obvious now, that is cathode is reduction. Now when we go into cell representation, okay, we have two half. Okay, both of them are indirectly contact and some of them are direct contacts. So what we do is, when we go for an indirect contact, what we do is, vertical line, okay, it's going to be at the center. So I got a right hand side and I got a left hand side. Right hand side R and reduction R. Getting it? This is what is the connection is. That way you need to remember all these things. Don't buy out anything, please. Okay, so right hand side R and reduction R. And where does the reduction take place? Oh yes, it's cathode. So here we are going to talk about cathode and here we are going to talk about anode. Here we are going to talk about oxidation. So I have already mentioned who is going to undergo oxidation and who is going to undergo reduction. Isn't it? So you know it very well. Okay, how we are going to consider it as. Alright, so on this side what we have is zinc electro is in contact directly with Zn2 plus. So this is in a solution form and of course it is going to be aqueous and I am going to write down over here M1 gamma 1. What is it? Hang on, I will tell you what exactly it is. Okay. Now here on the other side, there is going to be reduction. So we are going to start with copper 2 plus. Remember that. It's in the aqueous state. Means we are going to take it in water as a medium. We are going to write down here M2 gamma 2. It's in a single vertical line. And the copper electrode is being dipped into it. So copper electrode is dipped in copper 2 plus. So it's obvious the connection is direct. Okay, and therefore it is single vertical line. Similarly, the zinc electrode is dipped into the zinc solution, zinc ion solution. So obviously, it's going to be a direct contact. So it's a single vertical line. Okay, M1 and M2 are the molarities of zinc ions and copper ions respectively. So right on over here, M1 and M2 are molarities of zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus respectively. Okay, next is gamma 1. They are activity coefficients. Gamma 1 and gamma 2 are activity coefficients of common sense zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus respectively. Now, what are these? You have already learnt in your theory syllabus, so I'm not going to touch on this, please. Okay, activity coefficient and molarities and all that. Okay, now we go into the Nernst equation. Now, what is the Nernst equation says is that E cell is equal to E naught cell minus of 0 0.0592 divided by 2. Now, why this 2? Because the number of electrons involved are 2. Check it out. See this, there is an increase in the charge by 2, there is a decrease in charge by 2. So, in oxidation, two electrons are lost and in reduction, two electrons are gained. Okay, so number of electrons actually involved in the reaction are two. So, that's why I've written as two. Into log of concentration of the product upon the concentration of the reactant. So, we have log of Zn2 plus into the concentration of copper divided by concentration of zinc into the concentration of copper 2 plus. Okay, this is what we have. Clear with this? So, this is a Nernst equation. E cell is equal to E naught cell minus of 0 0.0592. Okay, actually you know it is what it is. Yes, it is 2.303. Okay, RT upon NF. R is a gas constant. T we consider it as 298 Kelvin. So, NF is 96,500. So, if you are going to work out all those things, you get the value as what? Well, 0 0.0592 divided by N. Because only the number of electrons goes on changing. Okay, all these values are constant. 
and I claim it is. So here the number of electrons are 2 into the log of concentration of the product to the concentration of the reactant. Okay, I hope everything is clear so far. Now by convention, whenever we talk about the concentration of the zinc and the copper in the isolated state, so we say zinc is equal to copper concentration that is equal to 1. Once again, my dear friends, I am referring that this you have done it in your theory part. See, I am repeatedly telling you that these concepts are done in the theory part because, as I said, I am only going to touch the practical aspects. Though I am explaining you the theory, but don't take into consideration that theory, okay, which you are learning in your books and all, in your textbooks and whatever, reference books and all. Not that theory I am talking about. I am talking about the theory with respect to the practical aspect. Okay, so please. So only I have to limit it to only specific points. So concentration of zinc and concentration of copper is being by convention considered as unity. Okay, it is being considered as unity. So this and this gets off. Now about the concentrations of the zinc ions and copper ions. Yes, you know that very well. M1 gamma 1 and M2 gamma 2. So therefore, now the, this equation will be considered as E cell is equal to E naught cell minus of 0 0.0296. Am I right? 0 0.0592 divided by 2 will give me what? 0 0.0296 into log of. Okay, now see, the copper concentration is considered as unity, zinc concentration is considered as unity, so that gets cancelled out. What remains is log of so concentration of zinc ions upon copper 2 plus ions. So zinc 2 plus ions are given as M1 gamma 1. So log of M1 gamma 1 upon we have M2 gamma 2. And so this, okay, this is what we get, right? Now, uh, once again, some changes which is to be done in this particular expression is, E0 cell, because you can see this, determination of the standard EMF, okay? So it is E0 cell is equal to, now what we do is, E0 cell we keep it on one side, and this entire part we take it on the other side, so the negative becomes positive. I hope you know this very well. So we have E cell plus 0 0.0296 into log of M1 gamma 1 upon M2 gamma 2. Okay, that's the way we do it. So, this is the formula that we get. I just put it in a box, red box, so you are very clear that this is what we are going to deal with as far as this particular practical is concerned. Okay, so E0 cell, that is the standard EMF of the cell, is given as EMF of the cell plus 0 0.0296 log of M1 gamma 1 upon M2 gamma 2. Now, my dear friends, this experiment is based on potential meter. Alright? I have made a reference of potentiometer in my previous video when I was considering about the estimation of Fe2 plus, okay, by titrating against K2Cr207, okay. So, here, we are going to make use of a potentiometer. So, by making use of a potentiometer, it is possible to find out the E cell. How? I'll tell you the procedure. Don't worry about it, okay. I'll tell you the procedure. So, you will calculate the E cell, okay. Next thing is, M1 gamma 1 and M2 gamma 2 are the known values, okay, that will be given to you. Of course, M1 and M2, the different concentrations that we need to prepare, as I will explain you in the procedure part, and corresponding gamma 1 and gamma 2 values, activity coefficient values are also provided to you. So, on the basis of the known values of M1, M2, gamma 1, gamma 2, and the E cell which you are going to find out through potentiometer, it is possible, my dear friends, to find out the E0 cell. Are you getting it, everyone? Okay. Next thing is, we talk about the standard free energy. Okay, that is, delta G0 is equal to minus of NF E0 cell. This is the other formula that we have. Okay, that is, delta G0 gives free energy change. It is called a standard. Okay, or we just simply call it a standard free energy change, okay, because it is considered as now minus of NF E0 cell, okay, because the sign conventions are opposite of E0 cell as well as delta G0. Okay, so what happens over here is 
F fixed 96,500. Okay, and you know in this particular experiment it is two. Okay, so these two values are known to you. Okay, very well. 96,500 and this is two. What remains is what E not cell, which you are finding out from here. Okay, so this value first you evaluate this, substitute this value into this. You are in a position to find out what delta G naught. Okay, that is standard gives free energy change. Understood this? So this is the way we are going to estimate both the values of a Daniel cell. So this is my dear friends. In short, the theory part. Once again, I repeat, don't consider the theory which you are being looking into with respect to the theoretical syllabus, only which is related to the practical purpose. Okay, so that is what is the theory all about. So once again, I repeat, the aim of the experiment is determination of the standard EMF and the standard free energy. Here, one more word I would like to make a mention about it. Otherwise, you feel that this is considered as wrong. And that is the use of a change. Okay, because here it is delta. Okay, we are not finding out G naught. We are finding out what? Delta G naught. So please be very clear. It is actually standard free energy change. Okay, so sometimes, you know, we call it like that, but then I, actually we don't mean that way. So that is the reason I'm trying to specify everything as much as possible. So therefore, there is no confusion. All right. So this is my dear friend, the introduction part about this particular experiment. I hope you have understood up to this very well. Yes, my dear friends, now I'll be explaining you about the procedure of this particular experiment. Uh, it is made up of various parts. So, my dear friends, we start with the first part. And that is about part one. And that is preparation of solutions. Now, in this case, the solutions that I'm talking about is as I mentioned, Daniel cell is made up of zinc as well as copper ions. That means we are using zinc sulfate and copper sulfate. So the stock solutions are already being given to you and that is going to be 0.1 molar of zinc sulfate as well as copper sulfate. Okay, these two solutions are already being provided to you. Now from this, you have to prepare two more concentrations. Okay, now always remember one thing is, whenever we prepare the solutions of zinc sulfate, copper sulfate and all, generally what is to be done is we take the weight of that particular salt, okay, and we dilute it, depending upon the weight depends upon how much volume you have to prepare the solutions, okay. Now before you dilute it, please remember one thing is, we need to add small amount of the acid into it, so that there is a common ion effect and therefore hydrolysis is prevented. So suppose zinc sulfate it is. Okay, I have taken the required quantity, measured quantity of zinc sulfate. Alright, now I want to add water. So before addition of water, I will be adding some amount of concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, so that SO4, SO4 common ion will prevent the hydrolysis of uh, zinc sulfate, giving zinc hydroxide. The reason is because that I want a clear solution. Okay, if there is a hydrolysis taking place, it gives you zinc hydroxide and that gives turbidity. Alright, so that's for that purpose, we are going to add some amount of sulfuric acid into it. Similarly, for copper sulfate also, the same thing that we take the measured quantity of copper sulfate, which is blue in color, and then we are going to add sulfuric acid into it, some quantity concentrated, and then we will be adding required quantity of water so that I will be getting a clear solution instead of a turbidity of copper hydroxide. Alright, so this is just in brief, I've given you about how exactly the solution has to be prepared. Okay, now coming back to, and that is, this is the stock solution I have. Now from this, I have to prepare two concentrations. One is 0.5 and the other is going to be what? 0 0.01. Okay, so now, if I want to prepare 0 0.5, 0 0.05, sorry, molar concentration, so now please check the ratios. If I half it, 0.5 divided by 2, it gives me 0 0.05. So concentration, I am making it half. Now you know very well, my dear friends, concentration and dilution are inversely proportional. So if you are making concentration half, I need to make dilution double. Got it? Yes. So well, how I need to prepare that 0 0.05 molar concentration solution is? 50 cm cube 
of 0.1 molar zinc sulfate being diluted to double times so 50 into 2 is 100 100 cm cube in a standard measuring flask of course by using what distilled water okay we are using what distilled water so 50 cm cube of 0.1 molar zinc sulfate which is already provided to you okay so you take 50 cm cube suppose if a 25 ml pipette is given so please have a presence of your mind pipette out twice okay into a standard measuring flask and dilute it up to the mark 100 cm cube standard measuring flask so you are diluting it twice so concentration becomes half so that 100 cm cube of the solution is now 0 0.05 molar after dilution got it great next concentration that i need to prepare and that is 0 0.01 molar so now i guess you get a, you get a hint how to prepare this now and that is if you can just see this it is one tenth can you check 0 0.1 divided by 10 it will give me 0 0.01 so one tenth is what concentration so dilution will be 10 times Divide by 10 is concentration, so dilution will be multiplied by 10. So therefore, what are we going to do is 10 cm cube of 0 0.1 molar zinc sulfate is diluted to 100 cm cube in a standard measuring flask. Okay, and make use of a 10 ml pipette, pipette it out. In a standard measuring flask, diluted up to the mark with distilled water, and that after dilution, the solution which you get is 0 0.01 molar zinc sulfate. Similarly, I use the word similarly, prepare 0 0.05 molar and 0 0.01 molar copper sulfate solution. Okay. Same thing. Only difference is here we have taken zinc sulfate. Now you are going to take copper sulfate. The quantities are same. 50 cm cube diluted to 100. That is going to give me 0 0.05 molar. 10 cm cube diluted to 100. That is going to give me 0 0.01 molar copper sulfate. Okay. So this is the preparation of the solution from the given stock solution of 0.1 molar zinc sulfate as well as copper sulfate. Okay. I hope you have understood up to this very well. All right. Okay. Now we go into part two. Part two, of course, I have mentioned before also in my video of potentiometer, and that is standardization of potentiometer. So for standardization of potentiometer, either you use the connector cables, which are being provided. Okay, introduce into the proper terminals or you use a very good quality Western standard cell. And the potentiometer should show a value of 1.018 volts. If it is not, then please adjust the knob. Okay, there will be a knob provided okay, over there in the potentiometer. So please adjust it to get this 1.018. And once it is adjusted, please don't touch it. Okay, and the other uh, things, I guess it's very well clear to you all. As I already mentioned is, at least 15 minutes before you start with your experiment, you have to put on the instrument. Okay, you put, the solutions are prepared, now you want to take the readings and then you put it on? No. Before you start preparing the solutions, because you need to prepare how many solutions? Okay, four. Okay, 0 0.05, 0 0.01 of zinc sulfate and similarly for copper sulfate. Okay, so you need to prepare four solutions. So before you actually start with the preparation of the solutions, put on the instrument and standardize it. All right, so this is my dear friends, the two parts of the procedure. Okay, there is a third part as well, but then please go through the first and the second part. First part is all about preparation of solutions and the second part is all about the standardization of potentiometer. I hope after this, everything is very clear. Yes, my dear friends, I hope the first two parts are very clear. Now we go into the third part of the procedure, part three. Now, my dear friends, in part three, we are going to talk about 
the determination of EMF of the cell. We have prepared the solution, we have standardized the potentiometer, so now we are ready with the determination of the EMF of the cell. Which cell? Yes, it's the Daniel cell. Now what I'll do is, instead of the writing part, I will try to explain in a different way, that is by means of block diagrams. Okay, so probably it will be a better understanding for you all. Okay, so we have a potentiometer. I'm just giving a block diagram, my dear friends, not the actual diagram. Please be very clear about it. Okay, suppose this is a potentiometer. Okay. Now, there is a display over here. There is a knob, which I was telling about, as far as the adjustment is concerned. Next thing is, there are two terminals which are being given for the standardization, as I was talking about the connector cables and all that. And these are the two terminals, okay? Let this be, say, a positive terminal, this is a negative terminal, okay, that way. Just a block diagram, it is not the actual potential meter, my dear friends, please. Okay, so don't say that yeah, this is not actually a, a potential. This is not the actual potential meter. I'm just giving you a block diagram of this. So just a faint idea. Okay, now, since the instrument is already on, and if it is in the standardization mode, so it will show 1.018. Okay, now what you have to do is, we take two beakers. Okay, we take what? Two beakers. So once again, I'm going to show it by means of a block diagram two beakers now this beaker we are going to take one molar of zinc sulfate 50 cm cube is enough it's already provided to you yes or no so take around 50 cm cube of 0.1 molar zinc sulfate similarly in this beaker we take 50 cm cube of 0.1 molar copper sulfate okay the stock solutions 4.1 molar from which we prepare 0.05 and 0.01 understood this so what we do now is in zinc sulfate we are going to introduce a zinc electrode like this we are going to introduce a zinc electrode in copper sulfate we are going to introduce a copper electrode okay and there will be of course you know wire also for electrical contact so this is a zinc electrode please be very clear it has to be zinc in zinc and copper in copper please be very clear about this okay otherwise you will do something else and you won't be getting the readings only then so once again i repeat you have a solution copper sulfate and you got a solution of zinc sulfate so zinc electrode with zinc sulfate solution copper electrode in a copper sulfate solution so i just here label it copper electrode in copper sulfate solution now connections because they have been provided with wires right so there are some connections which has to be done the connection is now since zinc is undergoing what oxidation oxidation takes place at what anode okay and anode means negative terminal okay so that way you need to remember so this will go towards the negative part Okay, this will go towards the negative one. Okay, now, so it's very obvious now. When you talk about copper, copper you connected with the positive terminal. This way. Okay, this is the way it is. Because copper is going to be cathode. Cathode is, reduction is taking place. Okay, and cathode is positive. Anode is negative. So I hope you understood this very well. Once again, I repeat, we take a 100 cm cube beaker. We are going to take 50 cm cube of 0.1 molar zinc sulfate into this. 50 cm cube of copper sulfate in the another beaker. We are going to place the zinc electrode into zinc sulfate. And we are going to place the copper electrode in the copper sulfate. So you can see now, zinc electrode is in direct contact with zinc sulfate. So it was a direct contact, so single vertical line. Can you recollect please? Yes. Similarly, the copper electrode is being dipped in copper sulfate. So once again, it's a direct contact and therefore single vertical line. Okay. So now connectivity is remember 
Zinc electrode is being connected to the negative terminal, copper electrode is connected to the positive terminal. So I have shown different colors so you understand this very well, which one goes where. Okay, and then next thing is still you won't be getting any readings over here. Please remember, yes, why? Oh, yes, it's solvage. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to take a solvage. Of course, the beaker is open. I'm not going to close it, otherwise, once again, you will say that how it is like this. Okay, the beaker is an open beaker, it's not a closed one, so I keep it open. Now, what we do is we are going to introduce a solvage like this. Okay, which will allow migration of ions from one half cell to another half cell. Okay, so it can be either a KCL or we can use a KNO3 solvage. The details of which you have already learned in your theory syllabus. Okay, so this is the solvage which is being connected. One arm will be in zinc sulfate, the other arm will be in copper sulfate. Okay, so now these connections are everything is being ready. Okay, and then you will see a value over here. And this value which you can see is going to be the EMF of the cell or what we call it as E cell. This value which you get. Okay, you are not going to get 1.018 because it is a standardization value. It all depends now how much you are going to get. Okay, but 1.018 is a specific value for standardization. Now this here depends. Okay, of course it will be around 1. Okay, because that is what a standard value which is being given. But then here whatever value that you get, it's a display. So that you are going to note down as what E said. How? What is the observation table? How exactly it is? Don't worry, I'll tell you. Okay, how it is. This is the right time. I'm only explaining about the procedure part. Okay, so I hope everything is being clear with respect to what point one molar. Now, once you have understood this very well, repeat the same procedure. Okay, repeat for 0 0.05 molar and 0 0.01 molar. Okay, so what you want to do now is you already prepared the solutions, right? Okay. Please do the markings also, which one is which, okay? In terms of concentration, okay? Not in terms of which is zinc sulfate and which is copper sulfate, my dear friends, because copper sulfate is colored, is blue color, zinc sulfate is colorless, so it is easily possible to identify. I'm not talking with respect to the color, but I'm talking with respect to what? The concentrations. So please, okay, label the uh, standard measuring flask. And this is 0 0.05, this is 0 0.01. Okay, so this was a stock solution which you used. Okay, so once the, all this is being done, you get the reading, you note it down, and then what happens is, uh, slowly lift the salt bridge, okay, put it in the beaker which contains uh, distilled water. Now, also these two electrodes, wash it well with water, and once again it, uh, put it in the respective beakers which are there in water only, so that it remains in a very pure state. And then, these solutions which are there, throw it off. Wash the beaker very well. There should not be any traces of the previous solution. And then, 0 0.05 molar on both the sides. Okay, here 0 0.05 molar, around 50 cm cube is enough. Okay, and here also 50 cm cube of 0 0.05 molar copper sulfate. Once again, salt bridge introduced. Connections you already know, same connections it is, no change. Okay, zinc will go to negative, copper will go towards positive. Okay, corresponding reading, E cell, note it down. Once again, third way, same way once again, now the weaker solution is replaced by 0 0.01 molar solutions. Okay, so you will be getting three readings. E cell for 1 molar, E cell for 0 0.05 molar and E cell for 0 0.01 molar. Okay, this is what you get. Now, where this readings has to be recorded, what is the observation table, I'll explain you that. But this is my dear friends, the procedure of that. I try to explain you with the help of a uh, block diagram, okay, so that you get an idea about how exactly this has to be performed, all right? So, I hope up to this, everything is very clear to you all. All right, my dear friends, now we go into the observation part, okay? The observation table. Now, in the observation table, 
how we proceed is first we have the observation number next we have zinc sulfate next we have is copper sulfate we have e cell and we have e naught cell this is what is going to be the observation table We have one, two, three. Three observations M1, gamma 1, M2, gamma 2. We have point 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01. Same thing is over here also. They were equal concentrations of zinc as well as copper. These are the values. Which are already provided to you. Okay, the gamma 1 activity coefficient values for the zinc and the copper are already given to you corresponding to the concentrations in molality. Okay, now we have E cell and then we have got E naught cell. E cell, the values you will be getting it over here. Okay. I hope you know this very well, how to do that. I have already explained you this in the procedure part. And then finally, I have also given you, my dear friends, a formula for E0 cell. Okay? I will just explain you once again. E0 cell will be equal to E cell plus 0 0.0296 log of M1 gamma 1 upon M2 gamma 2. Remember? Yes. So, E cell will be getting it for the first one over here through the potentiometer. That value is substituted over here. M1 is given, gamma 1 is given, M2 is given, gamma 2 is given. Now you can see very well. If in one beaker I am using 0.1 molar of zinc sulfate, in the other beaker also I am using 0.1 molar of copper sulfate. Same concentration. So that's the reason what happens is M1 and M2 gets cancelled. So what remains is, actually, if you want to go for a calculation, what remains is, gamma 1 upon gamma 2. Okay, that is what you have to do. Understood this? Okay, and the E cell value, which you are getting it from the display of the potentiometer, that value will come over here. And whatever answer you get, that will go over here, in this last column, that is E naught cell. Similarly for the second one, and similarly for the third one. So first you will be getting the E cell values from the potentiometer over here from the display. Those values will go over here. Gamma 1 and gamma 2 because M1 and M2 always gets cancelled. See this? So these are the values which you need to substitute. And you get three values of E0 cell. And then finally you need to take the mean of that. Mean E0 cell is equal to dash. Okay, that is what you need to take. Understood this? So this will be your, uh, of course your units will be in volts. What else you need to find out? This was the final answer, mean inert cell, determination standard EMF and standard free energy. I have already explained you the formula of that. Delta G0 is equal to minus of NF E0 cell. Okay? So you need to use this mean value over here. And then, you know it very well, 2 into 96,500 into the mean E0 cell. Okay, that is this. And you get the answer. Okay, in terms of kilojoules per mole, that will be the answer for delta G0. Understood? So this is my dear friends for the standard free energy change. So this is the observation my dear friends and followed by the calculation. Okay, no graph over here in this case. All right, only up to this we have. So my dear friends, I've explained you right from the beginning, the major theory, once again I specify, not the entire theory that you will be learning in your uh, theory syllabus. So only the required theory I've tried to explain you so that you understand this experiment. All right, and then I explained you the procedure which are made up of three parts. The first part is all about uh, 
the preparation of the solutions the next part we talk about and that is with respect to the standardization the next we talk about with respect to actual determination of the emf and then i explain you about the observation table and then finally i explained you about the delta g naught okay i hope you have been very clear only one thing is the minus sign is just left out so from my side i'm trying my level best that i don't make any fumble over here so the minus sign 2 is the number of electrons involved 96500 into the mean e naught set what do you get that is going to be the standard gives free energy change all right so this is what my dear friends an experiment of uh, daniel's here i hope you have understood this very well thanks for joining me take care bye bye